Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews and on-site training. What in the world is going on here? Now, this code is crazy. In the one, in the first case, we've got a simple string and then we're assigning it back equal to empty string. Now we are in Clang 11, lib standard C++ with O3 enabled. And in the second version, we are calling dot clear. The end result is the exact same thing. In both cases, all we're doing is resetting the string back to an empty string. Now, do we want to do it this way, which I've certainly seen in code and have probably done myself, or do we want to do it using the clear member function? Well, let's just go ahead and take a quick look at our benchmark and you decide which version you would like to use. Do you want to use the one that is three and a third times slower, or do you want to use the faster one? Go ahead and, and you know, I'll give you a minute and let you decide. And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to go ahead and just lower the optimization level a bit just to see what difference it looks like. If we take it back to say 01, let's pretend like we're doing a debug build here. Okay, so in a lower optimization level, it's not that much different. Now it's only 1.6 times slower. And if we take it back to this full optimization build, and let's go ahead and use a string that we know is going to have to actually do a dynamic allocation. So we're making this maybe slightly more realistic. And this version is now only 1.4 times slower, but it is slower in every single case. Now, what in the world is going on? Let's go ahead and take this code and we're going to open it up in C++ Insights. Now, with the benchmarking code wrapped around this, it's maybe not going to be quite as obvious what's going on here. Now, I hope you did watch my episode on the top 10 C++ resources that you absolutely must know about because CPP Insights would have been on here. And if you notice, it was linked straight from our quick bench link. I was just able to click on it. So we have this, you know, equals quotes and we have dot clear and you know there's nothing really crazy going on here by the time we kind of mentally sift through all of the stuff that is created because of the for loop and because of um, the benchmarking suite we have that operator equals was called here and we have that the clear member function was called here so not really anything really crazy Let's just go ahead and try to dig into our cppreference.com and see if we can learn anything different that way. Let's start with dot clear. Now clear simply says clears all the characters from the string as if by executing erase begin to end. As if by executing erase begin to end. I don't think that that's actually what the standard library is doing. Uh, linear complexity, uh, linear in the size of the string, although existing implementations operate in constant time. So it's as if done this way, but the compiler, the runtime standard library could absolutely do something simpler than that. Let's go ahead and look at this compared to operator equals. And this is going to be interesting to see what overloads to operator equals exist. So there's basic string, and then there's one that takes the character pointer type and initializer list. So this is certainly the version that we're going to be calling is the one that takes the character pointer. So it is actually possible to pull up the source code for libstudc++'s uh, basic string implementation. It's not very difficult to find. So I have here operator equals, of a const character pointer, and it just says this is a null terminated string, and then it calls a sign. Okay, let's see. A sign sets the value of the content of a string. Its definition is in basic as uh, in two forty seven a file basic string tcc. Let's see if we can get 
why it didn't take us straight to line 247 is an entirely different question. So a sign it. We want the version. Ah, here we go. Okay, so it has this type traits length underscore underscore s. So it's possible that it might be able to do a compile time check of the length or something, but it has to get the length of it somehow, and then call the assign that takes a pointer and a length, right? Which here we find the version of a sign that takes a pointer and a length, and then it has some checks with, you know, underscore underscore glibc requires string len, I don't know. So it has to do something here. And then it works to see if it can copy or whatever the data in. So it's actually doing an assignment of the string that was there to a string that is now empty. Now, if we compare this to clear, it calls immutate zero, zero, zero. It's zeroing out the string pretty much. So let's see what immutate looks like. Hmm, that one we can't get a link to, but we can see that it goes from this just zeroing out the string uh, with do dot clear to a version that has to actually do an assignment of the existing allocated memory. So it's actually going to have to, yeah, so it's having to do a, a, an assignment to the existing allocated string object. So of course, we're going to dig into this into Compile Explorer. Now on the off chance you weren't paying attention, back in QuickBench, it had the button to go to CVP Insights, and it had a button to go to Compile Explorer, and CVP Insights has a button to go back to QuickBench or one to go to Compile Explorer. So let's just go ahead and take advantage of that button right now. Now Compiler Explorer is going to fail because it doesn't have the benchmark suite visible to it. So let's just go ahead and add Google Benchmark to our project. And now it should compile. There we go, it compiled. And let's go ahead and do this. Now, if you didn't know this, you can hit reveal linked code. And this is doing a call to operator equals. And that's now gotten hidden, presumably. Right, so that's calling a function that's in the standard library. Let's see what happens to clear. Now, clear is also calling a function that's in the standard library. Okay, I was able to find the underscore m underscore mutate member function that's inside the implementation for standard string. Now, if you recall, we were passed in, clear passes in zero, the current size, and then zero. So we've got position is zero, lane is zero, and len two, no, sorry. Position is zero, lane one is the current size, which is hello world, it's 11 or something like that. And len two is zero. So old size is equal to old size. That's what I was already passed in here on len one. New size is the old size plus len two, which is zero minus len one. So the new size is going to be the same as the old size. And how much is going to be old size minus position, which is zero, minus lane one, which is uh, equal to the old size again. So how much is going to be equal to zero? So if the new size is greater than the capacity, it definitely is not. Or if it's shared, ew, okay, uh, then do these things. Else, if how much, so how much is actually going to be zero, so this branch is not going to be taken. This branch will not be taken. The else if will not be taken. That leaves this line right here, sent length and shareable to new size. So it's just setting the length to the new size, which is in fact going to be equal to zero. Pretty sure I did that right. So how much is the old size minus zero minus lane one? Right. So that's going to be zero. And this is going to be zero. New size is zero. How much is zero? old size, there we go. So it's just going to fall through here and just set the length. That's all it's going to do. So ultimately, 
This is just a single operation that it has to do, and it's setting the new length equal to zero. That's what happens when we call clear. Now it does do a couple of calculations and a few other things that are probably not necessary. Like if you really wanted to, you could like super optimize clear to just say set length to zero and in, in the internals here in lib standard C++. But as we can already see, anyhow, it is considerably less work than saying, okay, what is the length of the new string passed in? Do I need to copy bytes? from the new string into the existing string? Do I need to resize the existing string after I've calculated the string length? None of those branches really have to be taken here. It just says, well, you know, checks a couple of branches, then sets the value equal to zero. And for the sake of our benchmark, this is probably extremely branch predictor friendly, I'm guessing. So yeah, I don't know, that was a random diversion, but um, you know, be aware of your standard library, know what you're doing, maybe take a minute to think about what you're actually asking the compiler to do when you call a function and and say well you know what is there is there a more appropriate function to call here is there a function that might be more efficient or a function um, that makes the code actually more readable because if we see dot clear in our code we know that the intention is to zero out that string and make it an empty string now so yeah, uh, thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly and be sure to subscribe.